Hey guys, today we're driving a 2021 Land Rover Defender 90. This is the two-door short wheelbase Land Rover Defender. We have a three-liter turbocharged inline six with a mild hybrid system. That's a 48 volt mild hybrid. We have air suspension that can raise this up to 11 and a half inches above the ground. Standard, it's about eight and a half inches of ground clearance. So quite a big range of ground clearance. And of course, tons of off-road capability with different drive modes, a low range gearbox and an eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, Full-time four wheel drive. Lots of fun to be had in this Land Rover Defender. Let's walk you around this today, show you what it looks like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive and give you guys an idea of what this has been like to live with this week. My favorite feature about this Defender is, look at this, it has a jump seat. It's a little jump seat, but a jump seat nonetheless. What other new car has a third seat in the middle in the front row? Pretty cool. Lots of really cool stuff to show you around in this Defender. Let's start on the outside. So first of all, this is painted in Pangea green. We have 20 inch wheels on Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires. This makes 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. Pretty powerful. I think this thing just looks the business. It's cool, it's funky. It's kind of got a little bit of a Tonka truck vibe. Only about $65,000 too, as tested. This barely has any options. Underneath there, you've got a jack, tow hook, little cargo cover that snaps down right there. Not a lot of cargo space in the back of this Defender 90. Do get a tow hitch back here though, which is nice. I love these tail lights. Some of the design elements on this new Defender are really cool. A lot of focus on off-road capability approach and departure angles. Look at the overhangs on that rear bumper and front bumper. Really, really small. And when you get this lifted up to its max ride height, put it up into off-road mode. Look how quickly this air suspension rises up. It's almost instant. Speaking of departure angle, look at the angle on this exhaust. Just so you get maximum clearance going up steep inclines. It's definitely a different breed of vehicle from the traditional Defenders that have been produced in the last decades, but I think it's still pretty cool. Let's take a look under the hood. We'll lower this down, make it get a little bit easier access. This turbocharged inline six is rated for about 19 miles to the gallon combined. 17 in the city, 22 on the highway. Wedged in there, centered nicely over the front axle. Makes a good noise. This is coming out with a V8 too. That's gonna to be an absolute monster. And there's also an access height mode where you can just slam this to the ground. I'll show you guys what that looks like. The air suspension is a real highlight for me. It rides awesome, super comfy, super cushy. <laughs> One of my favorite things doing this week with this Defender has just been to tool around in traffic and play with the air suspension. Confuse people a little bit. All right, let's hop inside. It's freezing out today. Second winter here in Michigan. Okay, so this interior. We have some familiar bits. We've been driving a lot of Jags lately, and we have a very similar digital center display. Some similar steering wheel controls, but there's a little bit of a difference with this Defender. I actually like these steering wheel buttons better than what Jag is doing. You have a button for your heated steering wheel on the right, your speed limiter and your cruise control, lane keep assist, and your other cruise control buttons. These controls do get a little bit confusing at first, uh, but once you get used to it, once you kind of acclimate to using this Defender, they become second nature. They actually change depending on what you're doing with this digital display. So if you press this in, this turns into a directional button where you can change different, uh, you can change your trip, you can see your media, different display information, uh, vehicle warnings, stuff like that. 
Um, it's all a little bit confusing. Not the best design, if I'm being honest, but you can see your trip summary, your fuel economy. That's kind of all you need. Here's a volume control and then track selection. Hang up your phone. I have, I have no idea what this diamond button does. It's your favorite button. Okay, so you can select uh, a short press and have it mute tracks, redial, go to voicemail. Oh, that's neat. Okay. And then over here on the climate control, this is kind of a neat layout. A lot of physical buttons, a lot of physical controls, but again, these, no these knobs do different things. So if you press this fan button, this knob becomes your fan speed, which is kind of cool. And then if you press this button again, it turns into the passenger temperature. If you press this button, you can change off-road modes or drive modes. You have an option between eco and comfort for on-road driving. And then there's grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, and configurable. And uh, that's pretty cool because you can pretty much just set these drive modes to whatever terrain you're driving on, and it'll set up the four-wheel drive system, the traction control system, everything accordingly. We get a couple USB ports down here. Close all these warning messages. Um, a little power outlet. A little place to put your feet on this jump seat. Probably only for kids here, but still really neat. We have a digital rear view mirror, and then check out this sliding sunshade. That's fun, especially for the backseat passengers. Speaking of which, let's head back there and show you what rear seat room looks like. I like how some of the exterior color, that Pangea green, represents itself on the door panels. Very rugged, cool looking design, kind of similar to the Bronco with these bolts right here. We've driven a lot of Broncos lately. We spent some time in a Wrangler earlier this year, and it's been interesting to compare this Defender to those vehicles. So we gotta put our seat forward. We have two buttons right here, which is nice. Makes it easy. And once you get the seat pulled forward and get in, the back seat is actually pretty spacious. Most of the room you lose in this Defender is in the trunk and the back seat. It's actually a pretty usable area, which is great. You can, uh, can't fold this jump seat down too easily from the back. There is a pull handle up front. But you've got a little space here to put accessories in, a five volt charger, a couple USB-C ports, more charge ports, little armrest. Pretty cool back here, kind of cozy actually. And you get these uh, nice little windows from above. Love the view out of the side. It's actually quite nice in the back seat. I like this. Great looking interior in this Defender. A little bit plasticky, a little bit, uh, you know, fewer nice materials, fewer premium materials, more rugged oriented. Like these seats, you've got this cloth outline. The leather looks really tough and thick. Definitely a different direction for a lot of Land, Land Rovers that are more luxurious and premium. I can see a lot of people wanting to take these to Starbucks. All right. Speaking of which, this is going to be an on-road drive, probably where 99% of people will drive their Defenders. This has tons of off-road capability, but didn't really get a chance to take this off-road this week. Plenty of videos on YouTube that do that. All right, so wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Unfortunately, no wireless charge pad spec in this Defender. I don't know if that's an option. It probably is somewhere, but don't know might be in place of this jump seat. Uh, there's a few places to put your phone. Passengers have plenty of room. Driver's side, this is kind of your only option. Or down here in the door panel. All right, let's set off, take this for a drive. So, First driving impressions here. Steering is super light, and the suspension is very soft. This is a really comfortable vehicle to drive. A lot softer than the Bronco. Much better road manners than the Wrangler. The powertrain is excellent. I really like this turbocharged inline six. The eight-speed automatic does a really nice job holding gears, letting you ride out that torque from this powertrain. 
mild hybrid system makes for seamless startups. No starter noise at stoplights when stop start engages. And because this has such a short wheelbase, turning is actually pretty impressive. Look at this turning radius, it's pretty much rotating on that back wheel. That is amazing. It's actually a really kind of a fun SUV to wheel around in tight environments. I do like this digital rear view mirror, especially with the jump seat up, it pretty much blocks any view out of the rear view. And with it down, you've got your spare tire and a couple headrests blocking your view. So I've pretty much been leaving the digital rear view mirror on the whole time. down this jump seat makes for a nice armrest these seats are super soft very comfortable but also pretty supportive at the same time a little bit of body roll but once it settles in it actually handles pretty well I'm quite surprised at how uh, nimble chuckable and reasonably fun to drive this Defender has been this week definitely a little bit more of an engaging experience with the Defender 90 short wheelbase than the 110 that we had last year. Steering is super numb. There's not a lot of feel or feedback. This is a very isolated experience behind the wheel. A little bit of wind noise from the roof area, but otherwise pretty quiet over bumps. Not a lot of tire noise, not a lot of cabin intrusion. Set our cruise control here. Press into set. It's a little bit of a complicated button layout, but you do figure it out eventually. No adaptive cruise control on this Defender. We do just get lane keep assist and, of course, this automatic speed limiter. I like this infotainment too. It's pretty straightforward. You have some quick access buttons to your phone contacts, your navigation, and those quick access buttons will actually correspond to Apple CarPlay if your phone is connected. So you'll see navigation, so if you go to CarPlay um, and you hit the navigation icon, it'll take you to Waze or Google Maps or whatever navigation app you have. If you hit the phone icon, it'll take you straight to your contacts. You can select different users. There's a home button or a home icon. I mean, this is a real serious air suspension setup. A lot of pressure in the system already just to give you that ride height immediately. That's pretty cool. It'll automatically lower from its max height around 50 miles an hour. So you can get that higher off-road mode height at up to 50, which is pretty good. A lot of other vehicles with air suspension will lower around 30, 35 miles per hour. Yeah, all right, let's feel this power. It's quick, 395 horsepower feels pretty good in this Defender. Again, this is a really nice powertrain. It's almost a little bit overpowered for what the chassis is capable of. Can't imagine what the V8's gonna be like, but this is a great powertrain. If I were getting one of these, I'd probably swing for this inline six. It just sounds nice. You do have a sport mode for the transmission, a little bit of manual control. I like that. Shifter is right next to the steering wheel. Great placement for that. And overall, besides some of the minor complaints that I have with the buttons and the screen layout and some of the usability in this interior, it's actually pretty ergonomically friendly. I like what Land Rover has done here. 
the dual use of the climate buttons for other functions is pretty cool. It's clever, it works. a little bit more wind noise than I would like, but otherwise, this is such a comfortable vehicle to drive. <laughs> I can feel a little bit of intervention from stability control getting us rotated around some of these corners, but it's not, uh, it's not too intrusive and you barely notice it. This actually rotates really well for being a big, tall, heavy SUV. Ride quality is excellent. This air suspension is fantastic. Really nicely damped. Super soft, super cushy. Like I said, I think if you want fun to drive, the Bronco still has this beat, but not by too much. This is still a pretty interesting vehicle to wheel around. Tons of off-road capability, looks cool. There's definitely a cool factor here. This turns a lot of heads. A lot of people are interested in this this week. The air suspension makes it super functional. It's really nice to be able to get in and out of this easy in the access mode height, but also be able to take it off-road and get 11 and a half inches of ground clearance. That's huge. Much better road manners than the Wrangler. Maybe not as fun to drive as the Wrangler, but this is a bit more of a luxurious premium experience, I would say. Really nice forward visibility. I like that these door panels aren't too high. You can still rest your arm on them and the steering wheel and it's pretty comfortable. Really good sight lines over this hood. You get a pretty good idea of your, uh, your exterior dimensions and extremities on this Defender. You also have a quick access icon here for your camera view. You can see all around. Super useful for off-roading or parking. I've got to say, after driving this all week, this Defender has really grown on me. First, I thought it was a little bit too numb of a driving experience, but I've grown to like it. On our rough Michigan roads, it's it's kind of relaxing, it's kind of isolating, and, and all the comfort really comes through on a daily basis and makes it a nice and more luxurious driving experience, I think. Boy, these cameras really just stay on, that's great. It's cool getting in and out of this thing, it's cool looking at it. It's just a neat vehicle to walk up to. The interior is well done. The materials, I think, are just about right for what this thing is. There's a few cheaper plastics and things, but overall, it's, it's well executed, and the design is excellent. I think they've done a really nice job making this a little bit of a funkier uh, interior and exterior without going overboard or making it too retro. Overall, a very nice week in the Land Rover Defender 90. Maybe uh, one of these days we'll get a chance to take this off-road again and really explore some of its limits. But again, I wanted to give you guys a nice street drive, give you an idea of what this has been like to daily and live with on the road. We know how capable these are off-road and uh, it's nothing new, but this is probably where most people are gonna be driving their Defenders, around town, to and from, and uh, probably going to be seeing very little off-road, <laughs> which is okay. That's fine. I can see this replacing a lot of uh, Range Rover Velars in people's driveways. It would be interesting to see 
if there is a plug-in hybrid Defender coming in the future. I'm sure they have something planned, but all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. If you want, stick around for the sound system test. We'll do a quick audio test of this Meridian Premium Audio. Definitely a little bit disappointed with this Meridian sound. Uh, not the best that I've heard at this price point or from Jaguar Land Rover. Pretty muddy and, uh, and just not a lot of good range. That's okay though, because I think the rest of this Defender really delivers. For 65 grand uh, as a more luxurious off-roader choice, it's still got some cool factor. It's pretty fun to drive. It's a good option on the market, I'm glad. Uh, we now have a Defender in the United States, even though it isn't the old school, real, true rugged off-road off Defender. Um, this is still a pretty cool option.